released over a year ago, Jedi Fallen Order from Respawn is a fantastic old school action game. It borrows a lot of elements from titles such as Metroid and even Dark Souls, of course, and it combines that with a lovely Star Wars facade. But unfortunately, at launch, the game was plagued with some technical issues from slowdown, pop in, loading pauses, and more. Over the years since its release, though, it has improved, but it's still never been quite perfect. But it did see a boost with the launch of the new consoles and their enhanced backwards compatibility modes. Problem was, it was limited to those original resolutions. Now, however, EA has unleashed a new patch which promises some significant improvements to both image quality and performance across PlayStation 5 and both new Xbox consoles. So, to discuss that, I have brought along my good friend and colleague, Richard Ledbetter. Hey John, uh, yeah, really interesting one, this one, isn't it? Because essentially this is, uh, how can you describe it? Backwards compatibility plus, I think is a good way of describing it. It is the old code base. It is the original Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions. But somehow the code has been adjusted so that it knows it's running on next generation hardware and makes a series of changes to take advantage of the new consoles which is quite interesting. So what have we got to look at here? Yeah, so you're right. So yeah, it's similar to Cyberpunk, I suppose, where it's that extra awareness of the new consoles. And so the main thing we have here are, uh, there's a boost to resolution and of course, frame rate. But let's of course talk about pixel counts first. Uh, not necessarily the most exciting thing in the world, but it is extremely beneficial here. So originally, uh, both Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro had a 1080p performance mode, which did not run especially well. It was a completely unlocked, unstable frame rate, and I'd imagine it was bottlenecked by the slow CPU in those two machines. Uh, mm, absolutely. When playing it normally on Series X or PS5, you would get the bump up to 60 FPS, but it was still capped at 1080p. But now, uh, let's start with Xbox Series X first. Uh, we see a boost up to a maximum of 1440p, though dynamic resolution scaling is still in effect where it can drop to 1080p. And in fact, the menu actually still says 1080p as it originally did when you select this mode, but it does look better now and you still retain the 4K HUD. But that's not the half of it, is it? Because there's also a quality mode as well, which is actually the default. And like in the original release, uh, this caps the frame rate at 30 frames per second, uh, but now it allows the resolution to go all the way up to native 4K with drops down to 1512p. And interestingly enough, EA actually spelled these details out in their patch notes, which is something you don't necessarily see that often. Uh, but it is interesting to find it here. Mm -hmm. Definitely welcome as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, they did not spell out the resolution for the Xbox Series S, and there's probably a good reason for that. So. When played on Series S, the 30 FPS cap of the 1S version has been removed and the game now targets 60 frames per second, uh, but the resolution is still relatively low. Uh, based on various pixel counts, I saw stuff in the 720p to 900p range and maybe a little bit higher as well. Uh, it's tough to tell and it seems like it's probably using Unreal Engine's temporal upsampling. So it looks better than it did on the Xbox One S but it is still not just a clean 1080p presentation either. Mm. This is interesting because it is a performance mode only. There's no quality mode. And I'm kind of suspecting that, uh, well, a quality mode would actually go down quite well for this uh, particular version. Yeah, I agree. It would have been nice to keep that uh, for this one, as well as uh, PlayStation 5, which also only has a performance mode, uh, which is interesting because on PS4 Pro, you did have access to a quality mode which if i recall from our video it was like maybe in the 1620p range so that's gone and now you just have one mode with a fixed 1200p resolution and they note the uh, post-processing is rendered at 1440p which is actually noticeable as it sort of cleans up a lot of the post-processing effects and motion blur and things like that so it ends up looking a uh, very comparable between ps5 and series x uh, obviously a variable resolution on Series X where it's fixed on PS5, but you know, when you're playing it on your screen, it looks fundamentally about the same, which is to say it looks better than it did before, which is nice. 
Interesting though that there is only one mode on PlayStation 5, whereas you get the choice on the Series X. So I do wonder whether this is down to uh, just how much customization is possible within the cross-format SDK. Um, because we haven't actually seen that much in the way of uh, bespoke features added to PlayStation 5 games running on the PlayStation 4 codebase. But even so, this bespoke mode that we're seeing here, it is different to what we saw on the Pro. So that there does seem to be some progress being made there. Yeah, and that's what's curious. Like I said, the Pro had a quality and a performance mode. Uh, so it's baffling to me that it's been removed here. So we now have fewer options. I mean, to be fair, uh, as we'll talk about in a moment, I would rather play it in the 60 frames per second mode because it's pretty good if I can spoil that a little bit. But there are still some issues to cover. <laughs> But you know what? Fair enough. Maybe we should get to that, actually, because that, that's that's the primary draw here. And this is what really improves the game. Obviously, as a, an action-ish game, uh, it does benefit a lot from running at a higher frame rate. So, But the problem is, though, is this is also a game that kind of needs to be tested in certain areas. So I did the best that I could uh, with these saves. And I think Kashyyyk is the place. I think that's the name. Uh, was yep. was actually mm -hmm. one of the more demanding areas. It's the forested area with all the uh, sort of mechanical structures running through it. This was the area I tested a lot in my original video, and it definitely exhibited problems, though I did run through a few other areas as well, just for good measure. Okay, and let's see here. Uh, looking at my timeline, uh, let's just go with the Xbox Series X first, since I have that footage up. So, performance mode. This is the... This is my preferred way to play the game now. Uh, it definitely looks and plays great. It's much sharper, much more responsive than the 30 FPS mode, but it's still not perfect. Now, uh, I'm not really drawing comparisons here right now. This is just to lay out what we saw during the gameplay. By and large, uh, the game does run at 60 frames per second now. It's much, much faster than it was on Xbox One X. Uh, but there are issues specifically related to traversal. And I think you've probably seen some of this. When simply moving around the world, you'll notice these minor hitches and stutters, even when the game is running from the console's internal SSD. Mm, yeah. Uh, and it is noticeable. It did stick out to me, but I don't feel it sort of ruins the experience by any means. It still feels great overall, and it's responsive during combat. So... Uh, it's an excellent way to play the game. But yeah, that, that is odd that it's still like that. Uh, and I also noticed it sort of cropping up in certain cutscenes, like here, where if you just watch the scene play out, it just sort of skips and stutters throughout the entire sequence for some reason. And I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Mm, yeah, I mean, I played this one on Series X a couple of levels. found it quite interesting, actually, because I played the introductory level and it seemed to play out almost flawlessly it was really good i was kind of blown away actually by it um and then this yeah it's 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 an it's an amazing way to introduce the game but then the second level uh, which does seem to be a bit more open definitely i started to see those stutter issues you're talking about and i think the thing to bear in mind here is well on the one hand i was surprised to see it because the zen 2 cpu architecture the ssd this is a huge upgrade over the last generation versions but then i remembered that this stuttering issue actually appears on the pc version 2 so maybe it's not surprising that it still persists into the next gen versions too but overall i agree it, it really is uh hugely transformed overall and looks terrific yes i definitely agree with that um but there is also the 30 frames per second quality mode and i tested this one briefly i spent less time with it to be honest but i ran through the same areas of kashik and yeah it's pretty much a lock 30 fps but there are still occasional little hitches here and there again probably down to io uh, stalls or something else like that but still Mm -hmm. I mentioned this, but it's really important to understand that this is already a huge improvement over where the game was in the past. I mean, when I tested this back at launch, there was points where the entire game would just sort of seize up and you'd see assets kind of loading in in front of you. It was especially bad on the old Xbox One S where, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can kind of see what I mean right here. It's not good. Um, but <laughs> right. um, so... 
even with these minor, minor issues, I would say it's really, it's in good shape. Um, Mm -hmm. But then I guess you could say the same of the PlayStation 5 version then. It's also aiming for 60 frames per second. And just like Series X, it hits the target most of the time. You definitely still get some minor stutters when traversal. Um, I hesitate to make any comparisons because it's difficult to get a true like for like. But I would say that by and large, it does seem to stutter slightly less than the Xbox version, if that matters for people. So again, it's just the data. I'm pointing that out for people to understand. Uh, But that's what I found during my gameplay. It was a little bit smoother. Mm. It is curious also that they disabled DRS and went straight for 1200p fixed. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that happened, but, but there it is. I have to wonder if that has something to do with the way BC works on the PS5. Maybe there's something else that would have caused it to uh, not work correctly. Uh, really, it's all speculation. I'm not entirely certain, but honestly, it's it's good. Like it's really solid on both of these consoles. Uh, I would say I'd be happy playing it on other one. It looks basically the same, and it runs just about the same. A little bit sharper on Xbox, a little bit smoother on PS5, but honestly, I think people will be happy with either one, and it's such a big boost over where it was that it's hard to complain. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely. Now, unfortunately, this is not entirely true of the Series S, uh, where I found that this was kind of not as performant as the others. Um, it seemed to exhibit actual dips during gameplay and during cutscenes that were more GPU related rather than like IO stutters. You know what I mean? Where you'd just be Mm. running along and you'd see the frame rate kind of start to buckle under the 60 line. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not amazing, but it's actually still not bad. And it's a massive improvement over say Xbox one X or PS4 pro, when running in performance mode, obviously the image quality is a little bit less, but uh, it runs a lot better than those, but it does not match the Series X or PS5. So it's worth keeping that in mind, I think. Yeah, yeah, I still would have liked to have seen the quality mode in there, but, it, you know, still clearly an upgrade over the last gen systems here. I think something else I'd like to point out as well is that uh, I believe EA Play is now integrated into Game Pass. So I think you should be able to play... Uh, series s and series x if you've got a game pass subscription and it's a game that you might have uh, skipped over in the past and i think it's well worth checking out i mean i only played it for i don't know about an hour and a half today i haven't played it at all before and i was actually really impressed with it yeah it makes a solid first impression and you know i think it continues not everybody was into it but i really like what they did here i mean They definitely just went for a very Dark Souls-ish style formula where it has the similar mechanics to the bonfires. You're leveling up in a similar way and you're fighting a lot of small groups of enemies that are each individually a little more challenging than a typical mindless action game. Uh, But it really has this vast series of maps. I mean, the map design is absurd. It's very cool, I think. Each area goes so deep and spirals into so much detail. I mean, it's very Metroid in that way, in the best way. And there's a lot of platforming and, and you know, swinging around and sliding. And I think it works really well. And I love, of course, the Star Wars aesthetic it has going for it as well. And when you take all that together, I do feel that this is the best Star Wars game that ever came out of EA. I mean, this was developed by Respawn, of course, but EA published it. Uh, but this was my favorite by far, and I do think it absolutely is worth playing. And now that you can enjoy it at 60 frames per second on consoles, it's a great time to either play it for the first time or revisit the game. Because, yeah, it's uh, it's still awesome. Yeah, I think my first impression was simply that the production values are quite insane. I mean, the whole introductory section, it's uh, right up there with some of the first party stuff we've seen. And I'm kind of interested in playing some more now. Yeah, absolutely. You should continue checking it out because uh, it's, a, it's a cool game. And man, you probably also... I can't say enough about the motion blur shutter speed. I know it sounds silly, but just... I feel like this game, more than many others, really showcases why motion blur is so important to the visual fidelity of these titles. Because even at 60 frames per second, it adds so much uh, just momentum to everything. Like the trains speeding past the camera... Uh, fan blades spinning around all this stuff like everything just feels so much more fluid as a result of this effect and i love it but of course if you're a heathen you can disable it so 
Uh, it is possible <laughs> to play without it. Not sure why you would, but the option's there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good stuff. But I think that's uh, that's probably going to do it for this little quick video. So uh, thanks for joining me, Rich. Yeah, it was absolute pleasure. Just kind of weird that this just came out of nowhere. We just kind of had no idea that it was going to happen. Yeah. And it, um, suddenly we had this uh, update from EA. Exactly. And uh, a surprisingly comprehensive it's solid, yeah. Exactly. Of, every, of everything that was going to be in the patch, and there it is. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if uh, if we and other similar channels have had kind of an impact on these companies where they're feeling like highlighting these changes more often in a public way because people are starting to care about it. You know, and it's never been about just making nitpicks here and there. It's about improving the games. And when we talked about it with the Dirt 5 stuff, we talked about it with DMC5. I mean, I didn't do a follow-up video on Dirt 5 because it was on holiday, uh, but I did tweet about it. They fixed all the problems that I pointed out in that video. Yeah, definitely. But to be fair, Respawn do have a really good track record of disclosure on this sort of stuff. And it's That's just true. great to see that That's true. Uh, continue with this particular patch. Yeah, Respawn, love those guys. They've done amazing stuff. Titanfall 2, just a phenomenal game. Apex, uh, probably the best Battle Royale game that I've played. And then, of course, Jedi Fallen Order. So can't wait to see what they do next. Uh, but yeah, this is actually going to do it for now. So thank you for joining me again, Rich. <laughs> yeah. No problem. And if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, be sure to like and subscribe, ring the notification bell, and all that good stuff. Uh, and until next time, this is John and Rich signing off. <laughs>